January 31st, 2017. I'm Dan Rubin. This is the Bucknuts Morning 5 and Change. Back on our guest schedule, we are joined today, Tuesday, the last day of January, the day before National Signing Day by the one and only Dwayne Long. Dwayne, how are you this fine pre-NFD morning? Uh, I'm, I'm ready for National Signing Day. It's time. Let's get this thing locked up. I've been thinking about this. I was like, you know what? I just hope we don't have any more defections. I don't think that's going to be an issue, so let's focus in on what we do have. Obviously, the amount of coverage we have on the site right now is something you want to check out for a primer. Maybe you need to push pause and read Steve Hellwagon's super comprehensive recruiting roundup to start the day here with comments from Mark Porter and Steve Wiltfong in there that is really the Bible that you need for tomorrow and uh, the rest of today even to get ready. So we're going to check out some Dwayne superlatives here of a class that has the highest average ranking in 24-7 sports history. They're not going to finish with the number one class, I don't think, just because they don't have enough dudes, but we're talking quality here. Dwayne, your favorite guy, and I don't mean playing time, I don't mean early impact, I mean just your favorite guy, the best player in the class that they're getting is? Chase Young. Chase Young is is special. As far as a rush end is concerned, you got Chase Young and there's everybody else. I mean, I'm looking at this guy and uh, I believe the kid's name is Jalen Parks from out in California. I got him 1A and 1B uh, in the class as far as rush end is concerned. And they would have been last year. I, I really think these guys are that good. Best uh, rush ends I've seen last couple of years. He is going to have an immediate impact. You say that's, you know, you're just asking for the best player. Uh, he's going to. There's When he went out to uh, the All-Star game and came in at 251 pounds already, that right there told me that this kid, uh, he's he's been working out. He's getting ready to play football. And he will at least be part of the Rushman package, at least. No doubt in my mind. There's He's a three-year player, three and out, no doubt. And uh, there's just no reason not to to put him in there immediately. He can have that kind of impact, even though that's a position where the Buckeyes are pretty stacked. When you look at, at what's coming back, we saw Jalen Holmes really come on this past year. Uh, you got Sam Hubbard there, a little bit of a disappointment, but still solid guy. Uh, Jonathan Cooper's there. We, we've got a couple of more guys that can step in there and play that position, but Chase Young is the one that's unique. Yeah, if you look at the rankings, um, the final update, Young made the highest rise. So now if you, we, using the 24-7 sports composite, he finished as the second-ranked guy in the class behind Jeffrey Okuda, whose ranking is .9954, Chase Young .9953. So splitting hairs among greatness, big pickup, and again, another pipeline pickup at DeMatha. Besides Chase Young, of the guys they have coming in, who do you see making the earliest impact? Who do you see being the first guy they really rely on to get on the field? Akuda or Sean Wade. It's still a thing of losing cornerbacks two years in a row like that. It's uh, losing them early. It, it can catch up with you. When you're talking about NFL quality cornerbacks, guys that get drafted like that, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of tough. So, uh, and we've seen over the years that first-year cornerbacks usually, even though they end up being great, they often struggle in the first year. But these guys are, are really exceptional, and hopefully they'll come in here and and uh, and be ready. Both of them are in already, and that that really helps. There's no doubt about it, getting in, getting in the weight room, getting the playbook down, understanding the scheme. That's going to help. Uh, but these guys, they're probably going to be pressed into immediate service. And I think they are, I think they're going to be up to it. They're going to have the first opportunity to, to get on the field, though. There's no doubt in my mind. If I had to vote, I'm going to go with Okuda. I just think he's going to pick it up the quickest. The dude is very, very sharp. And one thing about Okuda and Wade, they are literally prototypes. 
You could not design better. I mean, Okuda, 6'1 and a half, 190 pounds. If you went weird science in the lab on a cornerback, you'd come out with Jeffrey Okuda. Um, and he's played a super high quality of football in high school in Grand Prairie, Texas. It's South Grand Prairie High, so I don't think there's an adjustment there. That said, uh, Wade's quality of competition has been incredible as well. And here's the thing also. The past, you mentioned the guys they're losing. The past few years, the guy they were getting back was really impressive. Gary and Conley was, was a nice place to start. You know, Eli Apple was a nice place to start. I'm not sure Denzel Ward fits into that level of player, so it makes it all the more important that we get guys out there now who can uh, contribute. And I think you're right, Wade Nokuda definitely would be at the top of my list. It also helps that they're the number one and two corners in the country coming in. That doesn't hurt. You are the man when it comes to linemen. Which offensive lineman do you see? I don't think any one of them is going to start, but which offensive lineman do you see having the best career? Uh, I, I'm going to have to go with Josh Myers. I love Wyatt Davis. I think both these guys, I think this is a matching set of guards that uh, that are going to, you know, guards don't usually get drafted early. They could be here for our starting guards for two, three years. And these guys move people. I mean, they are absolute road graders. They're shocking with their hands. I mean, they take defenders. They got them on roller skates from from uh, from the snap. And these guys are really outstanding at what they do. And there's there's still a chance that one of them could kick out to the right tackle. And and I, I'm actually I'm throwing Wyatt Davis in there too. Uh, I think his conditioning is just needs uh he needs to get in and, and get into training table, start eating right, and uh, let Mick get hold of him for a while. And he'll catch up to Myers. But Myers is the one that's going to get on the field. He's going to get on the field the soonest, and uh, he's going to stay there. And people need to get over the, the tackle thing. He was never going to be a left tackle. He could be a right tackle, but he is going to be so good at guard. He's going to be outstanding, and I think he gets on the field relatively quickly. I think he's going to be in the two deep. I really do think, as a true freshman, when you're talking about freshman offensive linemen, your first thing that jumps in your mind is, well, he's not going to be ready, you know, strength-wise. He's just going to be behind. We're talking about uh, an 18, maybe a 19-year-old versus 22-year-olds, and he's going to be behind in that respect. Well, Josh Myers is not. He's coming in here fully ready to play football as a true freshman. So I think he's the one that's going to make the, the real immediate impact and uh, and be outstanding. You know, we were just talking about Wade Nakuda being the number one and two corners in the country. Wyatt Davis and Josh Myers are the number one and two offensive guards in the country. This is just a ridiculous class. To have the number one and two players, excuse me, at any position is incredible. So you got to be strong up the middle. Especially with Price moving to center, there'll be a new right guard this year. So we shall see. There has been a recent commitment. I give credit to Steve Wolfong, and we'll do so again on Thursday, that he has said the whole time there was going to be a surprise commitment down the stretch. He didn't know who it was. It turns out none of us knew who it was as much as a couple of weeks ago. Elijah Gardner, a six foot five receiver out of Kent, Texas, small school football. What's your vibe on Gardner? How do you feel about the commitment? Um, his size versus, uh, you know, Tyjon Williams. He was more of a slot back who decommitted and went to Nebraska. Technically, I guess Gardner would be either his replacement, and they went with a different body type. Um, your thoughts on Gardner? I, I think he's just a much underrated guy. Missouri's an awfully solid uh, football program. They don't have to take a number 170 receiver in the country. I doubt, considering how low he was rated, I would say that he was never fully evaluated. There's just no way that kid uh, that we've seen on the film is number 170, especially with his size. I don't believe that's 4-4 for a minute. I do not. I'd be surprised if he got under 4-5. But at his size, that's big. That's fast enough. That's plenty fast enough. Michael Thomas is 6-2-6-3, went to the NFL with a 4-5-6, you know, in, in the second round. So, you know, let's get realistic here. Coaches talking that four four stuff with guys that big, it's just, that's Usain Bolt. Uh, that that's not something I'm worried about. He's fast enough. He's got hands. He's he looks just 
very much underrated. Like I said, Missouri doesn't take the number 170 guy. That's a Division II guy. So uh, let's forget about the ranking and just roll with it. My only problem with it is I'm still not seeing the need for another big receiver. We've got three on the roster. We had four committed with Grimes, White. We got uh, Harris. This guy makes it a fourth big receiver in the class. I just don't see the need unless I just wonder. I'm very interested to see if we're going to see more of a pro set, you know, one back, not a not a full-on pro set with a full back offense with Wilson. And that's where you want two bigger receivers on the field. So I'm – and since I'm not really a fan of the spread – that excites me. It just there's it just doesn't make any sense that we've got all these big receivers for a one big receiver, one split in offense, and which is the spread. Very interesting to see what's what's going to happen with this. It's just amazing to me that we've got to the point now where all we wanted was big receivers, and then we've got them in, coming in in droves now. I do think you're going to see a huge year out of Ben Victor. I'd be shocked if Gardner doesn't redshirt, but I don't mind the pickup down the stretch. Anytime you're going to bet on something, I prefer them to bet on the prototype. Gardner's a big, strong, fast guy, and you're right. There aren't very many people walking the earth at 6'5 that run a, four, a true 4-4. Four, four. Go back and look at the combine highlights from this past year. Very few people run under 4-4 four, four or 4-4-0. Four, four, if you run 4.4 four anything, that is flying. Four four zero. You could be in the four by one relay. Um, I'm not sure about the Olympics, but you'd be in the uh, Big Ten finals for sure. So, okay. So let's let's look a little bit ahead here. At this time last year, there were a lot more guys committed. Right now, they only have two for the class of 2018. Now, one of them is Emory Jones, who we hear is possibly the best quarterback Ohio State has, including the guys in Columbus. So that's great. And then Brian Snead, a standout running back out of Sessor and Armwood, Florida. Who would you say are the three guys on the board now? I'll give you some names. Um, Jackson Carmen, Toronto Vincent, Pelé Gatoi. Gato? Good Lord, that's going to be a – I almost hope that guy doesn't commit. That's a joke. <laughs> The middle line, the linebacker from uh, Bishop Gorman. Who are your three must gets still on the board for 2018? Well, obviously Jackson Carmen. He's number one. A guy. He is the already as a junior. He's the second best offensive tackle I've ever seen in Ohio. And who knows? You know, he may even challenge the almighty Orlando Pace. He is just that good. He's already a, uh, a, a really solid and pass pro, which is enormous with this. Got to be able to pass protect as a tackle. It, I mean, not that you don't have to guard, but it's what separates guards from tackles. He's long enough. He could be a left tackle, could be a right tackle. He's a guy that's a difference maker already. I mean, he's just that special. Number two would be Gay Tote. Uh, he's the kind of linebacker that makes a difference. He's the kind of linebacker that uh, goes early. And linebackers, you know, if you're if they're going early, they're probably going to be guys that, that impact the pass game and as three, four rush ends more often than not. This guy can play anywhere. He's very special. Definitely want to get him in here if we can. Uh, my, my number three guy for the class is going to be Jaden Woodbay. The safety from California is just, you know, we, we want to keep, we've gotten the, the safety position. It looks like we're, we've, we've got some, uh, talent there. We, we just were so down for so long through the Trestle era when he just seemed to think anybody, he could stick anybody back there. We got some elite guys. We saw what an elite guy looks like. Uh, with, with Von Bell and maybe even a more elite guy with Malik Hooker. Uh, and that, you want to keep that kind of talent in safety position. Jaden Woodbay is that kind of talent and he left here, uh, floating on a cloud. He really had a great visit. Get him in here to continue uh, the, the restock of the safety position. One thing for sure, if you go check out some of the names Dwayne has mentioned on this podcast. 
a lot of ones on there in terms of state or national ranking. Ohio State is recruiting at, without question, the highest level it ever, it ever has as a program, and considering EP thinks it's the best program in the last 50 years, quite a strong statement. We appreciate Dwayne stopping by. Now, you need to keep it locked to Bucknuts here, people. If you have not called in sick for tomorrow, that's poor planning. We're going to have stuff set up for you the rest of today and tomorrow, the most comprehensive coverage you can get anywhere. There's a tremendous preview up there right now from Steve Hellwagon that is top to bottom, the most comprehensive thing you can get. And then we will have coverage tomorrow morning starting about 6.30 a.m. as the faxes start rolling in. And don't ask me why they're still using faxes. We appreciate it. Have a good one. We appreciate Dwayne stopping by. Enjoy the day, Buffnutters.